Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. With Tex the VO stars. George Whittam, founder of Source Elements. Robert Marshall, international audio engineer. Darren Robbo Robertson. And Global Voice. Andrew Peters. Thanks to Tribu. Austrian Audio. Making passion heard. Source Elements. George the Tech Whittam. And Robbo and AP's international demos. To find out more about us, check the ProAudioSuite.com. Line up, man. Here we go. <laughs> Here you go, ready? Welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. We're your guests, Robbo, Andrew, and George, and I'm Robert. And you can get a good deal on a tri booth with PAP 200. And you should have Andrew and Robbo do your demo, by the way. And let's get on with it. Okay, it's actually T R I P A P 200. But yeah, nice work there, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you missed your calling there. Okay. I tell you what, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Look, you were looking so good there for a minute and you just fell at the bloody uh, like, the last like corner. A nanosecond. Uh, yeah. Dear, yeah, dear. Yeah, I think your job's safe, AP. Yeah. <laughs> you call this a job? Really? Um, <laughs> I bought it. Now, uh, George, you were telling us about uh, an experience at once again at One Voice with somebody who had a microphone that people were complaining about being broken, but it's kind of become his sound. What was the story? Yeah, I, he, he told me that, and again, I haven't heard this mic yet, so I would like to hear it at some point. I told him, hey, give me the audio. And um, I should give him credit, I th think. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, yeah, no, I should give him credit. Um, it was Chad Fisher, and he's worked with me in the past. And he, I think he just finished building a studio, too. That looked pretty impressive. Um, but he said that he's got a 416 or 416. That is sounding odd. According to folks that he sent the audio to that know the mic, he has said that they were concerned that maybe something is up with that mic. And I said, did you buy it used? Was it damaged? Was it counterfeit? All those things could be true. He said, no, I bought it from, you know, one of the big companies, the big, big companies. And I said, fascinating. Well, you could certainly reach out to them and ask them to give you another one and exchange it. Or you could look at this as a unique experience and realize that this is the mic that you're booking on and that people like the sound and you may not want to muck with it. So I said, literally just <laughs> engrave your initials in that thing. And <laughs> this is your mic. It's your unique sound. And uh, if you want to get another one because you want to have a proper one or whatever a regular one go for it but this is a unique mic for you don't don't mess with it any does anybody else have a mic with a quirk or a character that they uh to choose to keep using that you know yeah well i was going to say i won't mention the name because i don't want us to get sued or anything but uh um we've talked about this off air quite a lot but um a very famous american record producer has a AKG C12, an, old, an original C12, which was sent to AKG for testing when they were building the capsule, which has now become the Austrian Audio capsule, the CKR12. Anyway, this famous um, record producer's C12, which he absolutely loved, he loved, used it on everything, um, was actually broken. But he had no idea that it was broken. He just loved the sound of this broken microphone. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of audio, though, isn't it? Is is that beauty is in the ear of the beholder, and he, if he loved right. the sound that that mic made, it doesn't make him any less or you know anything else. It's just a sound he liked, and that was his sound. So good on him, I reckon. If it sounds good, it is good, right? Yeah, it is. Good. Yeah, exactly. That's what I like to say because yeah, nothing sounds the same, and it's funny, you know. People go, "Oh, well, I've got a U sixty seven and blah blah blah." It's like, does it sound like any other U sixty seven? Probably not. Yeah, I doubt it very much. I, I. I um, yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I don't know whether George has any experience with this, but I've had sessions with people who have said, you know, pick your amazing, you know, multi thousand dollar mic. It could be any of them. They go, I've got a such and such, and you hear them in the room that they're in or where they've got it placed or whatever, and it sounds like shit. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like, yeah. well, I'd rather you act, to be quite honest. Can, have you got a four one six so we the can just chuck up? The first thing is the room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's like there, it's that's classic. Yeah, but yeah, it, the room it, it, is key. Yeah, the room's key, but it's also, you know, it's like what complements your voice. What defines what your, your sound. Voice sound. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. You know, and if you're working. It's true. A, a mic is a very personal choice. Yeah. Yeah, the room is key, but the mic placement is key. And it depends a lot on the kind of mic. I, I do find that the shotgun mic, 416 especially, 
is tricky to get the placement really awesome. Um, and the mic will change its sound quite a lot based on placement, whereas a, a large diaphragm condenser cardioid mic will not change nearly as drastically based on the placement. You know, it will certainly increase proximity effect if you get too close, but you can move quite a bit side to side, up and down without a huge change in the sound. Without falling in different places of the p pickup pattern. Right. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things about a 41.6 is you have to stay consistently in front of it because it drops. I mean, that's the whole point is it drops off significantly as you get to the side. But the problem is that that's it's, not linear. You know, it's colored. It's different when you get to, it. It doesn't drop off evenly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it has this weird pickup yeah. nodes on the sides of the mic. If you look at the pickup pattern or in the back, yeah, if you look at the pickup pattern, mm -hmm. polar pattern, I should say, a uh, diagram, you'll see it looks almost like a sword because it's long in the top, yeah, yeah. short, has a tail yeah. on the bottom and these little, you know, things that stick out on the sides. So it's definitely an odd pickup pattern. Out of interest, so if you're setting up a uh, 41 6, which, where do you, if you imagine the, the talent standing in front of the microphone, where do you actually place the mic and wh what area of the person do you point the mic at the nose just just above the plosive line okay. i mean the tip of the mic is right above the plosive line but where is it aiming yeah oh well at the at the mouth basically but just keep the diaphragm away from the gush of air that you know from the plosives because i've right, been to right. so many different studios where the, they you know the 41.6 is pretty well everywhere anyway in this business and there, there is no consistency with the way the engineers set up the mic. Yeah. Well, see, every engineer's it's, got his own sound too. Every engineer's got his yeah. own preference for where the mic's aiming and all that sort of stuff. So, yep. you know. I mean, it, it kind of it kind of depends on where you are. If if, if you're in a horrible sounding booth, then just get into it and try to nullify the booth compared to like the ratio of your voice, and then you can just EQ out the proximity effect because the forty one six is being a shotgun has quite a big proximity effect to it, mm. you know? It's still a different, it's still qu not quite the big, big proximity effect that you're going to get from a, a large diaphragm LDC, cardioid because yeah. you can get so much closer to the capsule, you know? Well, because the, the capsule is way up the microphone in the 416. Yeah, it's not near the tip. It's up halfway yeah. up the tube of the mic. Right. If if you were able to virtually get your mouth there, then the proximity effect would probably be insane. Oh, for sure. Well, if you use a like a mm -hmm. hardware cardioid or cardioid version of that mic, which would be the, I guess they didn't make one, but the newer series, the MKH, no, the is it called the MKH eighty series? Mm -hmm. The eighty twenty, eighty thirty, eighty forty, eighty fifty. It's probably like a MKH twenty, maybe, or or and one one of those might be similar to the yeah, or Norman U one eighty four, or any one yeah. of those pencil mics. The proximity effect is yep. is massive, but you just have to be really careful not to pop, pop the mic because the, the capsule is right there. Really, really easy to to pop. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's no there is no filter. Yeah, there's nothing there at all. Like it's just like sounds a bit like you and I, Robert. No filter. <laughs> <laughs> Tourette's yes, <indeed>. Tourette's mic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's funny. I, I've had you know the forty one six. I've had them directly in front of me, pointing as you said, you know, above the sort of forehead kind of thing, pointing to the mouth. I've had them pointing to the chest. I've had them coming in from the side. All sorts of different pointing things. Pointing to the, the chest. chest. Yeah. 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 We, wow. I don't know. And I, do that. I mean, I, I've seen people who do the side thing and the sort of nose thing. If you want, if you want to thin it out, you just kind of get it away from the mouth and a little bit more on the head, and it'll get a little bit brighter for you. Yeah. Um, but I've not seen the chest. Yeah, that was years ago. I remember someone pointing, and they and I they had it set up in front of me, and it was like basically probably about almost a foot away from my head and pointing down past my face. Uh, excuse me. My, but pointing at your chest. Yeah, my laundry's done. Um, yeah, I'm pointing at my chest. That's, yeah, that must strange. have been so woofy. It was certainly yeah. bassy, that's for sure. I mean, that's that's the problem that you have when, you know, you have like a lavalier mic that's too far under the chin. Yeah. And you lose all the, all the, top. All the high end yeah, from all the top it. You know, like stuff. they clip it on your – you have to kind of clip a lavalier mic a little bit lower down so you get some – because if not, the chin creates an acoustic shadow of – the S's and the other details. Well, I was in a, I was in a booth today. One of my clients whose studio designed, and he 
has a 41.6 and a U87. And he says, you know, sometimes I'll go to the U87 because I just kind of get mic fatigue working on a 41.6 all the time, you know, because of its tiny sweet spot and, and all this stuff. And, and, and um, I said, hey, by the way, he's like, but, you know, sometimes I use that mic and I hear a little bit too much reflection off the console below and the display next to the mic, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, well, have you, do you know about the secret microphone that's inside a U87? <laughs> and he's like, huh? And I said, flick the little switch on the front to, you, to figure eight. And he tried it, and he was like, whoa. Drop everything from the Holy center. cow, yeah. that's crazy. Oh, and I said, now stand on the side and talk into it. And it was like he was Nothing. blown away. I said, yeah, this is a whole, yeah. this is an entirely different mic and a different sound from the U87 Cardioid or the 41.6. This is really, it's a third mic you already had. You just didn't know. And try it out and it's, experiment. It's a much softer sound with a bigger proximity right. effect. It's more ribbon-like, and, and, dare I yeah. say. I mean, the ribbon mics really cancel out the side because the problem with the the car, the um, what do you call it the figure eight on the on the U eighty seven is it's two capsules and they are a little bit apart, right? So they don't cancel out at all it's frequencies. But you get a ribbon mic, that thing is infinitely thin, and it really, really, really does just vanish to the side. Mm -hmm. I mean. Completely. But I'll tell you, you don't need it to fully vanish to be an advantage. If you have anything reflective yeah. below or to the side, it will pretty well kill that. It's and great. It, it, yeah. it, just, it, it just focuses the sound. I was like, check this out. And he was like, whoa, that is really cool. Well, you, you've seen those diagrams where they go through the polar patterns and you can see them continue. Because people think of polar patterns as being discrete, but really polar patterns are a continuum from omni to cardioid and then it goes to figure eight. Right. And then, and and in there, you know, like your hypercardioid is kind of between a figure eight and a cardioid, yep. for example, I think. And that and that's why the hypercardioid's got the node in the back. Um, and so it's not, you know, like a good tube mic. If you've if you played with a good tube mic, the polar pattern is a continuous knob. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And and some of the better pencil mics are offered in what they call the wide cardioid. Oh yeah. And those are very natural sounding. They kind of have the naturalness of a more close to the naturalness of an omni with still some focus. Some, to it. some proximity effect. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. You can't avoid it. But um, yeah, it's like polar patterns are not one, two, three. There's, there's an infinite number between the omni and. But the thing I actually talk about polar patterns and stuff like that. If you, um, if you have the OC818 and you get the dongle that patches into the back. Oh, even better. Oh, you then can really yeah, you can play with the figure patterns. Yeah. No. You can play with the polar patterns on a frequency basis yeah. with that polar pattern. Well, you're talking about the the, the, Pretty cool. the the other part when you're using the two um, XLRs. But this is if you use the... Oh, the two capsules. Yeah, yeah. But if you use the dongle, the Bluetooth dongle, and use the app on your phone, it's it's not just like clicking from one pattern to another. You're just sliding from one pattern to another. Right. So you can do a mix of... That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Which is That's what I'm talking about. Uh, but even better, you can record both of them. And then in your DAW, after the fact, you can play with the polar pattern after you record. Yeah, but that's if you're using the two USBs. Uh, not USBs, XLRs. The, the, yeah, the two right. XLRs, yeah. yeah. The two XLRs, and then you have to use the, the plug-in afterwards yeah, to but the plug -in, sort of re-render. There's a different plug-in. Yeah. If you get the Bluetooth dongle that goes in the back of the mic, then you get a plug-in that goes on your phone. And it just gives you the and polar you pattern. That's what it, it is. Yeah. The yeah, idea really is that, unique. you know, if the mic's up on a boom pole, instead of bringing the thing backwards and forwards, you can do it from your phone. So the advantage of that multi-pattern, you know, multi-frequency polar pattern designer is you could have a booth with a problematic low end, and especially in a corner. Maybe it's the only corner that you can put the mic where you have enough space, but you can treat the low frequency with, a, say, a figure eight, get the mic... So it rejects the uh, the weird, you know, the weird bounce back to the side. And then in the upper frequencies, you can open them up to a cardioid or a wide cardioid where it sounds more natural, makes gives you a little bit more space to move about without having, you know, such a critical sweet spot on the microphone. And you can kind of, um, you know, have the benefits of a figure eight where you need it and have the benefits of a cardioid and a wide cardioid where you need them. And really play around with the polar pattern to fit your exact need instead of just having one polar pattern across the whole spectrum and then you have to deal with the nonlinearities where you don't want them to be. It would be good if you could so actually use um, that thing post or pre-print so you could you could actually set and forget and if you've got a troublesome you booth. Oh, you can do it? I've never you, tried it. 
Well, well, you can just record both capsules, and then you can put the plug in on there and design go you know design it away. So if you're always recording both, in fact, you could even do it where you know like you could automate the plug in. So <laughs> on certain words, if you go really low, you could you could even change the uh, so where the were we parameters if you were really going crazy. But yeah, you can definitely put that plug in on a post process and just but to do that and make use of it, you have to record both capsules. Yeah, separately correct you know you yeah. have to use the two xlrs yeah but that's the whole point of that mike is that it is literally that flexible mm. yeah, yeah yeah i still like the um i still like the app though that that i find really handy instead of clicking from one pattern to another you can actually just slide across an infinite amount of mixtures of like a, everything yeah like the old classic tube mics yep exactly yeah yeah exactly I say it's a great mic you know when you look at the price point well, absolutely, and also that you know we're talking about your your distinctive sound. That polar pattern thing sort of gives you the chance to make it as well, doesn't it? Really, that's right. Indeed. And if you does. use a polar designer a Bluetooth tool, then it's locked into that fifth setting. It has a magic fifth setting that becomes your pattern. You you literally you can set it. Yeah, yeah, it's in the firmware, which is great. Like, you can't do. Does it, it do it by the frequencies too, or is no. it just by the it doesn't do so. You have to use the plugin to get the frequency right. per frequency. Uh, that's about that'd be amazing yeah. if you could bake it in there, and then you just have like your own microphone, your sound. But still, yeah, I mean, totally. like like what I was going to say, the price point of the of the eight one eight, and you look at it compared to like a U eighty seven. Well, actually, a better mic to compare it to is actually the Neumann TLM one seventy R, and I mentioned that one because that one's come up a little bit more often. One of my clients bought one a while ago and she hasn't used it yet. And she said, I bought it because Disney uses it and she does a lot of Disney. So I said, well, I was wondering why. So I looked at the, the uh, frequency response of the 170 R and I saw it was definitely a lot more of a flat response. It's much flatter. And um, so they want that really just uncolored sound. And, but that's a multi-pattern with m more choices. You know, the U87 just has the classic figure eight Omni and card. This one's got more inter, you know, it's got hyper um, cardioid and a few other things. And it's still, it's not a bargain mic. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. No, use that thing is $2,000. It's it's more money used than the 818 yeah, it's, is. It's new. still quite spendy on the Neumann, in the Neumann uh, lineup. Yeah. and. The only thing that competes from Neumann on price would be the 107, I think is what it's called, TLM 107. That's that's, but that's a single pattern. The 107. I think that's the multi-pattern one. They have, they have a TLM series, or is it a 104? The 107 is 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 around at least used. It's around 1,300 or 1,200 bucks. I don't. That's a multi-pattern, though, right? Polar. I don't see. Yeah, a, yeah, that's the multi-pattern. I've got a. It's got a funky little digital control joystick on it. <laughs> it's really odd on the back of the mic. Is that how it does its po yeah, polar Yeah, it's pattern? actually a multifunction joystick, and that controls the pad, high pass, and polar pattern by flicking the stick around. Oh. And it's, I'd say in terms of quality, it's somewhere in the 103 to 10. It actually might be more like the 102 in terms of what capsule it uses and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing that's in any way similar to the one, two, three, four, f five yeah. pattern. It's 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 about the same price point as a eight one eight, but a little uh, more. It's a little bit more. It's fifteen hundred. Yeah, it's two hundred bucks more or so. You know, so bang for the buck, yeah. that eight one eight is still it's, it's outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah, yeah it, it really is. is. It's a killer it mug. Yeah. yeah, I'm just looking at the MA one. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. It looks like a butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been using those again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. yeah. Sorry. It's the only way we can stop him talking out of his ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, it was the first thing There's that came into out. my mind. Yeah. <laughs> There's the out. Yep. Yeah. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Trimer. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Robbo. Got your own audio issues? Just ask Robbo.com. With tech support from George the Tech Wizard. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website. ProAudioSuite.com.